Hello and welcome back to Seconds Out. My name is Eamon Khan here, joined today by esteemed trainer Jamie Moore. Jamie, sir, how you doing? Hi, mate. Okay. Yeah, all good, all good. Even better to speak to you. Uh, first of all, let's rewind a little bit, uh, Jamie. You won or earned, I should say, a WBC trainer's belt. Must be a good moment to share the moment as well with a belt with Chantal Cameron. Yeah, it was nice, nice gesture. Um, obviously, didn't get a world sort of title myself as a fighter. Yeah. Um, so I've helped, helped um, Chantel achieve that. Um, and obviously, it was uh, it was nice to get one. Is there any latest movement in terms of the rematch uh, that Katie Taylor maybe wants to exercise with, with Chantal Cameron? Any movement on that at all? We've not heard anything. Not heard nothing concrete. We, we did hear a few weeks ago that she was sort of thinking about moving forward or there was a question whether she'd go straight in or whether she might take Serrano in between. But but since then, we've not heard, heard anything. So, um, yeah, we'll see. See what happens. What What... What's the expectancy in terms of that? Do you feel that you will be heading towards a Katie Taylor rematch? Um, I think knowing sort of how competitive Katie is, and mm. uh, and you know, um, I don't think she she would have she will take losing a fight lightly. So I think she'll she'll if if she's got anything to. It, so I say, no, I, I think she'd push for the rematch because um, she'll want to try and reverse it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, Chantel said to me she'd prefer it to be at 135. I think a lot of a lot of the comments after the fight was sort of Chantel was too big for, for Katie. But the, the fact of the matter is Chantel was 135 and only moved up to 140 to get the opportunity to box for the world title because... The, the openings or the or the or the chance wasn't there at one thirty five because Katie was sort of tied up with the belt, so um, it wasn't that she couldn't make one thirty five, and and you know Chantal took all the risk in in her last two fights in the sense that she boxed the reigning undisputed champion in McGaskill, who came down to her weight, um, and you know she didn't get the chance to win world titles at a different weight class, um, then. Katie Taylor was coming up and challenging for Chantel's belts again. So Chantel had very much liked the opportunity to be a world champion at two weights herself. So um so so she understands that there's a, a rematch clause, but um but at what way it didn't stipulate this weekend's so. action, which saw obviously an interested party that you'd be keeping your eye on, that being Regis Progre take on Danilito Zarilla. I'll let you set the table in terms of what you saw in his performance a lot of people kind of said maybe it was less than Stella from Regis this time round. Yeah, listen, you can't you can't perform at your best every time. Um the the, the opponent was real negative. Um you know so so I think they hurt, both hurt each other early on or felt each other's power and it made them a bit hesitant for the rest of the fight really. So it wasn't a great fight to watch. But um sometimes that happens. You know um he's He's a, it doesn't make Regis any less of a fighter. It's just, um, you know, regardless, he could, he could have looked a million dollars for for all for all week. You know, the, the fact of the matter is, um, I believe Jack can beat any fighter at one fire. And, um, and he just loved the opportunity to box for a world title because... He feels, and I and I feel rightly so that that he feels like he, he should be the reigning champion anyway. So, um, so I think it's a great fight. I think you know a lot of boxing fans would love to see that fight. Um, there's some huge fights to make at one four. You know, um, you got a lot of people coming up from lightweight, and you've got a lot of established fighters there at the minute as well. So, um, so it's exciting times for 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 Jack, especially now he can sort of get momentum moving forward. And um, and hopefully over the next couple of years now he can be involved in some massive fights. And I'd I'd love the next one for him to be to be progre. Whilst Jack and Danielito are two completely and very distinct fighters in their in terms of their styles, they're both kind of similar in the sense of like neutralizing their opponent's best uh, assets. So is there quite a bit in the game plan, or at least the effectiveness that Zorilla had that you take into? 
a potential fight with Progre to give you more confidence in getting the win should the fight materialise? I don't know. I think that there's, there's a few different sort of dimensions to it. For one of them, I I think Progre is much better against Southpaws than he is with, with Orthodox fighters. It, it seems to me like he feels really comfortable um, boxing Southpaws. So, so again, that's why I'm saying I, I, I wouldn't really go off that last performance if I was going into a fight with Pro Grape for Jack, I'd be going, I'd be, I'd be watching Tate's back of when he, you know, he when, when he's just won the, the, the title, going back to the, the World Series final, which against Josh Taylor, which was a cracking fight and, and, you know, it was a really close fight, could have gone either way. So, um, so yeah, he definitely, he's got a different type of style when he boxes southpaws. So, um, so, so, I wouldn't really be too concerned about watching that last fight. Like I'd be more concentrating on on his better performances against Southpaws. I was surprised to hear Progre say that. Look, he was in his back garden, and that kind of brought some nerves around to him to to kind of perform. Does words like that make you again give you a bit more confidence that if the fight was materialised and it happened in Progre's back garden, that maybe there'd be a bit of a mental edge there too? Maybe I think. I think you've got to take into consideration like a, a lot of the stuff that's happened over the last few years where people was boxing the arenas with nobody, nobody there watching, mm. which is such a, an alien thing to happen. So I think people are still adjusting, getting back to normal. And, um, you know, I, the, the, the least I ever boxed in front of be, from being 13 years old was maybe 200 people in a social club. So, so w- when you're boxing in front of 20 people, for the first time in your life, you know, and then and then it happens for maybe a year. It takes a, it takes a, maybe a bit of a time to adjust back into to those sort of big occasions. Um, but you know, from from the reports what I read, it wasn't it didn't sell great in in New Orleans. Um, so, but I understand Progress' point of view. You know, he probably doesn't want to travel because he feels hard done by when he when he travelled to Scotland and and he wouldn't want that sort of scenario happening again. Um, so, but we're the challenges. We, the, there's not so you don't have massive pulling power in situations like that when you're wanting uh, uh, the chance to fight for someone's world title. Sometimes you just gotta go with the flow and, and wherever it ends up, it ends up. But I'd, I'd probably guess that if it's going to be in America, it'd be probably somewhere like Vegas. Uh, in the post-fight interview, Progre was mentioning the likes of Haney, Tiafimo Lopez, if he's retired or not, uh, and other names, but not specifically Jack Cattrall. Eddie kind of had to mention it there. Uh, what? Why do you think that was? Um, Jack's probably in the Who Needs Him club, isn't he? He's, he's mm-hmm. like, he, a lot of people feel like he should be recognised as the number one in in the division um, and he's not. So like in terms of it's a lot of risk without a lot of reward but you know the reward the the the, the opportunity what Eddie's going to be presenting to, so the reason why I wanted to sign with Eddie is because Eddie's got a lot of the the strong fighters at 140 and he and he he can make those fights, and it makes it makes more sense when when it's when when those fights are um, more doable when they're in the same stable because you're not necessarily left out to dry. Then if you do come unstuck, you sort of rebuilt and you and you're still with the same team. So um, so you know, Jack, Jack, Jack's for me is the best in the, in the world at one fire, and Regis. He's probably looking at it, going, "This, you know, it's, it's a tough fight." I don't. I, I've got a feeling Regis will fancy it because he's because Jack is a southpaw, and uh, and and I do feel like he's more comfortable with southpaws. So that's one reason why I'd, I do think he'll he'll, he'll take the fight. And uh, you know, I've I've seen a lot of comments about him not mentioning Jack's name, yeah. which as a fighter you don't like because I'm, I certainly don't think he's avoiding Jack. Um, it's, the, the, the the names what he did mention are, are established world champions, so um, so that's why I mentioned them. So, um, but but I would say he probably didn't like the comments that he was he was avoiding Jack's name for for a reason that he didn't want to fight him. I don't think that's the case, and sometimes it doesn't go down well. Now we all know the history between 
Josh Taylor and Jack Cattrall. Uh, Josh had his own business to attend to in the Tiafimo Lopez fight, which from his perspective, unfortunately, he tasted defeat for the first or second time for many people's uh, eye. Um, does the fight with Josh Taylor, considering the loss now, still interest you and Jack to the same level as it did before? Well, Jack's main priority is winning a world title. And um, so at this current moment in time, Josh doesn't hold one. So I wouldn't say that that would, would be a fight what appeals to, to Jack because his ultimate goal from being a kid is being a world champion. And um, and, and whoever's holding the belts is the ones what he wants to fight. So um, so I think that fight will always hold value um, because, because of the history. Um, so, but I wouldn't say that it would be some thing that Jack would be looking looking at, you know, sort of straight away now be looking at world titles. There are a lot of people in this uh, uh, country, in, including myself, kind of seeing uh, Josh Taylor as the favourite there, uh, but ended up on, on the end of the defeat. Were you as surprised as maybe many others were that he didn't get the win um, a couple of weeks back? I, I, I thought I did. Th I picked Josh before it. I thought his, his sort of, his intensity would be too much to him in the sort of last third of the fight. He seemed to go the other way. So he sort of Tiafimo sort of took over in, in the in the, the last third. Thought the first half of the fight was was close. So sort of, it was sort of fifty fifty, and then as it went on, Tiafimo sort of pulled away. Um, you know, hindsight's great, but just looking at that, Josh Josh is one of those fighters, a very very good, intense pressure fighter, and um, sort of thinking about it in hindsight now. Generally, you don't have a long shelf life when when you box like that. I was I was similar in that sense. I was retired at thirty one because <laughs> you just you accumulate a lot of miles on your, your clock in a short space of time because everything you do is sort of high intense and it's it's hard. Everything you do is hard. So so maybe you know a combination of the weight. Um, sort of miles on the clock injuries maybe, maybe maybe that was the reason why he couldn't sort of finish the fights like he did before because his best attributes Josh's best attributes um, sort of historically have always been that strength the size of him the intensity the work rate is the tenacity and he'd always finish the rounds really strong you know, the, the last minute of rounds, even going on late into the fights, he'd always be finishing them strong. And he just doesn't seem to be able to do that now. And maybe it's just getting, you know, father time catches up with everyone and maybe it's just getting to that point now where he's, he's, um, he's just, the, the, may, maybe there's a few too many miles on the clock. Two final things for me, Jamie. Uh, first of all, I, I believe if I'm correct here, you're uh, training uh, Dave Allen, but he's currently frustrated with, his position in terms of getting a fight. Do you know what the latest is with Dave and maybe when he's next out, but he was looking for that Wardley fight. Yeah. Th th people keep talking about the, the Wardley fight. I'd love that fight for him. Um, so I've, it has been spoken about apparently between, between him and Eddie, but he's not heard nothing. So the last I heard was a, maybe just over a week ago and he said, he's still not heard nothing. So, um, so you can imagine it is probably a, a little bit frustrating for him. Um, and you know, he's a character, Dave, and he can really fight. You know, he, he, he's he's dedicated himself now, and he's sort of got a new spring in his step. He's he's a dad, and um, he has a he has a reason. He has he's a higher, a bigger reason to to do this now, and um, he's put a real spring in his step. And um, I wish I wish it would have had him for five or six years in this sort of mood and mode. Um, it's not too late for him. He's still he's still young enough and fresh enough at heavyweight to to sort of make a mark and do something. So I'd love that opportunity for him. It's just um, you know the the politics of boxing is frustrating sometimes, but he does deserve it. I think Ed, yeah, I know I know Eddie's given big chances in the past, but but um, you know there was there was, there was things what happened during the sort of just before he, he sort of walked away from the sport where. It wasn't Eddie's fault where, where the fight fell through. We was in where, where you had to get locked in a hotel, and it was a fr frustrating few days where Don King wasn't letting um, the guy who was fighting come over, and he, he never ended up boxing and he walked away. And I think he feels like you know deserves an opportunity now for, from from Eddie, 
and Eddie's trying to make it by all, by all, by by the sound of it. He does want the Wardley fight to happen for for Dave. So fingers crossed it can happen for him because he deserves it. Final thing uh, for me, uh, Akafiaz, look, he, in his last performance, he rose up off the canvas to get the uh, victory and it feels like he's having those incremental tests as he looks forward to uh, a big fight. A lot of kind of rumbling about this potential fight with Campbell Hatton. How serious a, a fight is that? I don't know if it's... It, I mean, I, I've heard it been mentioned in the past, but the two different weight categories now is, is from from what I can see. Mm. Um Akin's gonna be doing super featherweight and and I think Campbell was um originally you know doing lightweight, but by the look of it, he's gone up to super lightweight. So um at least last couple of fights have been around sort of one forty two mark. So so it looks like there's this sort of gap creating in terms of the the weight categories now. It would have made sense maybe when when you was looking at it. Me, you know, nine months ago, but by the look of it now, Campbell's just sort of filling out and growing. And um, and Akib, he's got his nutrition better now, and and um, he's he's going boxing at one um one thirty. So um, so there's quite a big weight discrepancy. So it doesn't look like that will be happening anytime soon. Anyway. All right, then we'll leave that there. Jamie, I appreciate you. I appreciate you giving me a bit more time than I uh, asked for. So I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of the day. Um, much appreciated. Thanks for speaking no to problem. seconds out, sir. No worries, mate. Thank you.